Hello everyone, this is T Fury 017. Welcome to T Fury Gaming. Today, this is going to be the second episode in my Code Vein playthrough Let's Play series. Um, this is with commentary, and we're going to be entering episode two. Um, last episode, we killed. Um, we killed the first boss, Oliver Collins, and I'm going to let Lewis talk and I'll start talking inside, again once he's finished. Giving birth to the society of revenants ruled by Silva. The Jail of the Mists. As time passed, that was the name people gave to the world inside. The creatures trapped inside the miasma wander in a never-ending cycle of death and rebirth. Always searching for blood beads to sustain them. Revenants need to have blood. Without it, they turn into those creatures we call the Lost. The Revenants who captured you were desperately searching for blood, terrified of losing themselves. It's a common fate these days. But ripples are beginning to form. You cleared the miasma and revitalized the blood spring. Where did you learn to do that? You've forgotten? <laughs> Anything you do remember? It'd be pretty funny if Lewis just Unusual. said he's useless. Losing so much of your memory. I suppose it was the same for her. It would just been great had Lewis just said, Ah, oh, so you don't remember that either? Well, you're pretty useless, aren't you? Yeah. Well, at least you're good in a fight, so we can use you as muscle. <laughs> That's pretty much what happens when you're not the brightest in the punch. Alright, so let's just get on over here. We got our missile. I'm going to save here because it's always a good idea to save. It's a good common practice. You should do it as often as possible. Level myself up to 162. Talk again later. Your friend is probably lonely in a place like this. I'll have to say hello to her sometime. Go over and say hello. Does that mean that Lewis is gonna go over and hit on Io? We can talk again later. Cause that's exactly what it sounds like. Your friend seems really, really lonely over there by that bed. I'd like to go over and say hello. Yeah. Yeah, I think you guys know where I'm going with that. Talk again later. Your friend is probably lonely in a place like this. I'll have to say hello to her sometime. Okay, he said the same thing twice, so there's no need to talk to him anymore thing. there. Don't do anything funny. I'll be keeping an eye on you until this talk with Louis settles down. So, um, just so you guys know, this cut this episode is gonna cover up up to where I'm at well, now, which is basically place, home right. base, uh, right, up I'm to the point where I fight training. the uh, the anything. butterfly. Uh, I forgot the name of it right now. I'm sure it's in the descriptive title, um, there but the uh, there's a butterfly boss, boss, the second boss, and then that'll bring the conclusion of this video to an end. Let's talk to Davis, see what he's thinking. Just as a warning, try not to stir up any trouble. Davis has such a serious face. Job and, well, you get it, right? Just so there's no confusion, don't cause any trouble, okay? I need to be able to move freely, you see. Murasame is 100% not what she seems, and you'll find that out later. 
hide your weaponry and maintain it for mm, you. Don't want to spoil anything. Anyway, relax and make yourself I mean, I may have spoiled some things with the description, but I'm really I needed sorry. some type right of way back. for you guys to know the boss battle I'd be doing, so that's why. <clears throat> Uh, ooh, let me pick this up. New item. Enthralling magazine. <laughs> it's warm here, isn't it? Okay, this is Io talking to her. what must be done and for me that is my mission to stay at your side I was wounded while I was searching for you I am not a very capable fighter she's actually a really capable fighter and in the game at least Gameplay wise, Sorry, in game, I don't know about story wise, but he's very later, capable if you use something. her as a partner. <clears throat> the ability to draw strength from experiencing memories and a power to revitalize blood springs both unprecedented. Sorry, but could I get a sample of your blood? We might understand more if we analyzed it. It won't be much, just a small vial, so you won't need to worry about blood thirst. It'll take a while to get the results. Take it easy in the room back there while you wait. Just hanging out in my room, chilling. Yeah, I toy with the camera a lot, so only when it's times like this, like where I'm just like trying to make it seem like I'm actually resting, where I probably could run in now. I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to go run in and talk to Lewis again to move the story along. So you guys aren't boring, just uh, bored, just watching me run around and do nothing the entire time. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get back to where I went. And let's talk to Lewis again to progress things. Yes, sometimes I look no, around I randomly even though I say I'm going to do something. I've confirmed something surprising. Revenants have blood types that differ from those of humans. These types greatly affect a revenant's abilities. However, your blood has no specific type. Or maybe more accurately, your type is broken. Your ability I am not broken, sir. Have no specific type might be due to your being what we call a void type. You were able to gain another revenant's power through a vestige, right? That phenomenon is unique to void types. Supposing you are a void type, there's a test I'd like to perform. Don't worry, you'll get something out of it. I'm going to give you some of my blood. If my theory is correct, should act as a medium and give my power to you. Well, here it goes. And this is where you get Lewis's blood code, which is actually really good if you want to use a one-handed sword build. Did you go visit Murasame and Coco? They should be ready to do business now. Weapons and blood veils are vital parts of a revenant's kit when exploring. And you actually, in a certain part of the story, you get a lot of other people's blood codes too when you talk to them at a certain point in the game. We'll continue where we left off. You remember that scene we witnessed at the vestige? kind of stuff happens every day here. Silva has taken most of the humans who survived under his protection. So revenants are left to rely on blood beads alone to slake their unending thirst. But, well, 
Nothing in this world lasts forever. The springs started to dry up, and so blood beads grew rarer and rarer. And the order Silva created by levying and distributing blood beads won't last much longer either. The world needs more blood beads. Only then can we strive for fairness instead of petty favoritism. That's why we've been exploring the Jail of the Mists. We're doing research to learn all we can about blood beads. But the miasma has been a real problem. Um, I just remember the more. boss, the second boss that's coming up. Stalled. It's a butterfly of delirium. Um, I'm not looking at the description right now. It's just I remember it off the top of my head as I'm playing this. If you could help us. Yeah, butterfly delirium. Well, you'd be drawn into a better conflict. Still, the truth is, we don't have a lot of hope without you. Will you join us? Thanks. <laughs> what if your character just said no? Said, will you so, join us? No. It's a done deal. Well then, from now on, you're one of us. Yakumo Shinanome. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to seeing you in action. Let's get right into it. Here's what's going on. We're studying blood beads and their springs. We want to know how and when blood springs appear, their cycles for producing beads, and the composition of the beads themselves. We've made a few discoveries. First of all, we found that there are tubes like capillaries running through the earth. We call them blood veins. And so far as we can determine, every single blood spring is located on top of one of these blood veins. Also, after comparing blood beads and blood veins, we now know that they are mostly comprised of the same substances. In other words, we can safely assume that blood springs always form along blood veins. And we think that means there must be a source somewhere, a kind of headwaters for the blood beads. Now that we have you around to clear the miasma, we can investigate the springs and follow the blood veins. And hopefully, find the source. Right? We want to check out the old city ruins first. Sorry for the rush, but we should head out as soon as you're ready. Something I've come to realize, um, this game is actually a really decent blend. As far as graphics are concerned, very similar to um, Ghost Eater, uh, or God Eater, my and mistake, God Eater. And while the graphics are God eater it, the gameplay itself it. is Dark Souls. And I just realized that. Um, I thought it was a interesting thing. I mean, I know that it's made by Nemico Bandai, who, well, at least published by Nemico Bandai. But uh, the same company or studio that actually made the game is the same person. So I just found it pretty interesting. Um, that's a co collaboration there. Vivifier, a drug that causes temporary temporary dispersal. That's useful because sometimes you don't want to die and you just want to go back to where you were. So that way, you know, you can get that heal on. <laughs> you know, at least recover all your health, recover all your HP, cover all your HP items, that sort of thing. Come again. And these are my abilities. I'm going to head on out now to that place. Outer crossroads it was. And we're leaving now.
one thing about uh, the boss that uh, I'm going to meet later in this game and you're going to see later in this game is that he likes poison. He likes to poison people a whole lot. So much so. And uh, I don't know if you saw this. I'm going to switch out my partner and add Yakumo. Because Yakumo does a massive amount of damage. Really helps you out when you're battling people. And uh, he's just great. Well, actually, I'm going to see if I can solo it. Yeah, I'm going to solo this. Let's go. Oh, that guy that I just ran by. He actually gives you, uh, if you bring old world materials to him, he'll give you some stuff that you can give to other characters in exchange for useful items like weapons. So say you want Lewis's weapon, you just go up to that dude and he'll help you out. I'm trying to go back. Um, there's sometimes these wall. It's like maybe they didn't finish rendering the game like you know, they're rendering the rest of the game while that doesn't need to be seen anymore, so there's nothing there. So they build the wall so you can't see it. I've heard of this in game design before, but I'm gonna go back. Yeah, to, to my left, there's a guy. And uh, you give him overall materials, he'll give you stuff, like stuff that'll heighten your friendship meter with various characters in the game. And once that friendship meter is at a certain number, like 50 or something, uh, it'll help. Um, it'll help you. You'll have a chance to get a good weapon. Like, the best one-handed sword in the game. All right. I'm really sorry for yawning, guys. Um, the best one-handed sword in this particular game, or at least as far as damage output is concerned, is Lewis's, the red sword, that big red sword that... Uh, you saw he had, and that's a really good weapon, especially in the beginning of the game. Does a decent amount of damage. Um, on your first playthrough, naturally, you won't have it. Second playthrough, you'll have any weapon that you had as long as you didn't sell it. Um, that's probably obvious, but I figure I'd throw it out there. Uh, I'm going to continue down this pathway. I'm trying to see if I can solo again and maybe only use... Um, maybe only use characters to help me when I'm doing a boss fight because I want to see if I can actually handle these guys or mobs of enemies and stuff alone since I did do well fighting alone before Expectations exceeded. And we found a missile. Ah, oh, missiles are great it. because it's like, oh my gosh, I need to save. Operation. I'm dying. I can't fight anymore. Otherwise, I'm going to die. And then you come across it and you're just like, ah, oh, missile. <laughs> if it was Dark Souls, naturally bonfire. If it was Bloodborne, naturally. Um, I think you could call that lantern. Yeah, I think yeah. you call that a lantern. We know where two springs are thanks to past expeditions. Let's go have a Lewis look. Lewis just them. said that I'm vital to this operation, or at least Akira, my character, is vital to this operation. He should have been known that. <laughs> that settles it. You are absolutely vital to the operation. I know. <laughs> you don't gotta tell me twice. I know I'm the most important character. If I die, the game's over. That's how I know I'm the most important character. <laughs> Let me pick up these here items. La -di da di da. Queen iron. That'll be used to increase your weapon. Oh, wait, no, no, no. That'll be incre used to. Ah, uh, how do I say this? I think you increase your uh, weapons ability, like strength. 
Prometheus Part A. That is a vestige. It'll help you find more in the blood code, or at least unlock ability in the blood code. You want Prometheus A, B, and C, as well as D. I believe it goes up to D, but I'm since this is basically a walkthrough slash let play, let's play, uh, you'll see when I go get to that point all of them so that was the first one i just picked up we're just gonna kill this here guy over here hacky slash over up in there heal myself up make myself feel good and super speed i love that teleport slash move it's very useful when you get in close you do some damage you get out that's what this build is about Getting in and getting out. Well, sometimes I might get hit on occasion because I'm not perfect, but you know, you know, you catch my drift. Throw some ice at him. Honestly, I don't really like that move. That might be something I get rid of later. Um, I don't feel it does a lot of damage. And it doesn't feel like it has a lot of distance either. Like fire and lightning. They, they do well. That's not their name, by the way. Um, you get the fire from Lewis, which is one of his abilities, and you get the lightning from uh, from a, a female character later on. I'll, I'll point her out when we get to her. You can also pick up these enemies' weapons as well if you don't have any of the weapons I have. And if this, it's your first playthrough, it's probably don't have that weapon. So pick them up if you feel, look at their stats, determine whether you want to use them, and then, you know, equip them. And up in your grill, hacking and slashing. Ooh, backstab. Right through the back. It's different when you actually feel the pain. I just, I just quoted a movie. It, it was a movie where people were cyborgs. I cannot remember that name of the movie. But I do know that I did not come up with that on my own. So please don't sue me. Anyway, I'm going to backstab this person. I don't think I'm going to get sued. Uh, I'm going to backstab that person. And he's going to go to sleep. Backstabbing is fun. Lost shard. Honestly, I don't know what these lost shards do. I think no. Um, there are these things that you can get that you can increase your like basically your souls, similar to one in Dark Souls, but they're actually called something else. And uh, I wanted to say it was what I just saw, like the lost shards, but I'm not so sure anymore. Um, I'll tell you about them a little bit later. And a Vestige, Hunter Vestige Part C. So we didn't get B, but we do have C. But I do believe we come across, sometimes you don't come across them in the exact order. Uh, sometimes you come across them at different times. Like I got A, C, that sort of thing. Oh, this guy's throwing stuff. Yeah, you gotta watch out for these guys that do throw knives uh, at you. So make sure you dodge them. Backstab there. Mess that guy up. And now we're coming to the to a fatty here. Uh, yeah, I did end up having to substitute someone out. Um, you guys didn't really miss anything other than the fact that I had... I, I will admit that I did die, and I needed to do something about that. Like, I needed to get another character because I determined that it's not fun getting hit really hard and dying. So, I got, uh, what's her name helping me out right now? She heals you better than the rest of them, so... She's pretty useful. Um, Io. Io is what her name is. And we got a cutscene. Hey, what is it? You okay? Bill Louie. You smell that? Yeah. Human blood. An escapee. 
Now, where did she run off to? Huh? Hey, chumps! What the hell are you doing here? None of your business. Oh, really? Then tell me this. Why would scum like you have the sweet stink of a human on you? The girl belongs to us. Put your paws on our property and your ash. That clear? How dare he threaten us like that? You know, Fresh he's gonna he's gonna learn stuff. a lesson or two. You I definitely believe that. About what so, it feels like to have a plan long one-handed sword you know a jammed through his chest. Human. You know the plan. Hell yeah. Let's hope she hasn't been devoured by horrors yet. So yeah, what I was saying before is I had died. You saw a, a transition where the footage kind of blended into each other. And basically I had cut out the part where I had to go all the way through that again. Um, yeah, I killed Fatty, the Fatty. And um, that's not their proper names, but you get what I mean. I can't level up anymore. But I did get my, um, what do you call it? My souls back or what you call it? Usually in Dark Souls it would be called Souls, so I'm just going to call it that red ink that gives you back your currency in order to get weapons or, I mean not weapons, get uh, good stuff, you know, level up and things like that. Oh, I got another enemy over here I lost. Make sure you cut all these guys on the ground because you don't want them jumping up and hitting you. Because you, um, with the build I'm using, you actually do quite take quite a lot of damage, especially the uh, the veil, the blood veil I'm using. Um, it primarily focuses on not being that heavy, so you can move around good enough. Um, I'm doing some pretty good damage at least. At least with these these type of guys, I know with armored enemies that'll come later in the game, you'll see that uh, the build does have some flaws. But uh, overall, I thought it was a pretty decent build. Uh, I was able to beat the game with a one-handed sword type build. So, and this is one of those things, those events where you know a whole bunch of enemies come at you at one time, and you gotta fight all of them. And uh, they're fun, but sometimes they can get a little bit hard, so I'm going to take all these guys out. Get my girl in the aisle over here. I'm not getting this way. Uh, I like to, oh, also, when you do the one-handed sword, make sure you buff the weapon, because that's where a lot of your damage output's coming from. Like, don't use that on your own. Like, um, buff the weapon, also use, um overdrive once you get that what once you get that that'll come from like the uh, assassin um blood code tree and i believe you'll find that in the game I i'm definitely going to go through uh, i'm just not at a point in the game where i can really show you where it is because i'm currently fighting these guys and we just killed a mob of enemies so those are pretty fun but they can also be pretty challenging and you might end up having to do it more than once because they could kill you so uh just keep those things in mind i'm just gonna hit at these dead bodies make sure they don't pop up and kill me so yeah um if you there like i said i remember you probably heard this in the first video but 
Um, I do will edit out um, times where I have to do something over again so I'm not wasting your time. So that way you actually, you know, get to know where things are at, where I'm going. You don't end up having to watch me die and then do something over and over again. Then you get bored, then you leave and you don't want to watch anymore. You know, I want to make these actually somewhat entertaining for you guys. Um, And let's, this device is not working. This device is not working at the moment. Did you find something good? And let's see how far we can jump down here. This is actually how you unlock the elevator. So just uh, watch my movements, watch what I do, and I'll get you to that elevator that you want to drop down to. And here's the elevator, and this is where we can ride it up and ride it down, which will basically create a shortcut for us for later in the game. I believe that's like the fourth, I want to call it the fourth level of the game. That is the fourth level, like the fourth place you go to after the third place, which takes place after the Butterfly of Delirium, where we're trying to get to at this moment. We can jump down safely now. Heading so I'm going to continue onward. And here's a here's a few group of enemies. I don't want to call them a mob because it's not an army coming after me. Just so you're aware, the, uh, as far as extension uh, health, what is it, uh, regeneration factor, uh, you get a maximum of 10 of those. Uh, I think there's something that you can make it up to an extra 2 or extra 3, but that's like a special ability. Honestly, I never got it, so... And I'm just gonna kill those little dog things along with my uh, my buddy Io. See, I'm telling you, she's really capable in the fight. Like he says, I'm not very capable in the fight. I don't know. You handling that halberd there pretty damn well. That's actually another weapon I'm probably gonna try out later on in this particular game. No. Oh, right through the back. See, doesn't this build seem like a fun build? I mean, it's all about being fast, getting in, getting out, using your, um, your casting abilities or magic and just, you know? I feel like it's, uh, it's a balance, and balance builds do well in this uh, particular game. Balance builds do pretty well, in my opinion at least. They do very well. 
more balanced you are, the better. So, yeah. I'm just going to hack at these dead bodies, make sure that um, they're dead. Oh, one was alive. You see, that's why you got to make sure you got to hack at the bodies. Yep, oh, another one got up. See, make sure they're dead. Nobody wants to be zombie lunch. Or lost lunch because they're technically lost. Did you find something good? You're using your ability to its fullest. There used to be a lot of vehicles here. Let's get oh Hunter Vestige A. Hunter is also important for trying to get blood code abilities for the Prometheus uh, type uh, blood code um, because that's a, there's a story element involved there and I don't want to spoil it for you because um, I do go through that and you know I want you guys to be somewhat surprised by that but yeah I want you to um, I want you to see that so get get um, all the vestiges you can and uh, luckily I go through pretty much all of them here at least everyone that's super important that you'll need for this particular build if you're looking to try and do something similar to what I'm doing on the next one I might do some things differently because I'd be going through like another build um, when I decided to do code vein um, I'm not sure if the next video series i come up with will be of code vein but it may but it'll definitely be uh probably action adventure i i tend to jump around a little bit you know whatever i'm in the mood for but once you guys have opinions i'm more than willing to listen to hearing what you guys have to say what games you want to see me play um action adventure fighting sports you know that sort of thing watch your footing we have no choice. And I'm going to put it right here. And oh, I hate that move so much. But thank you, Aya. That's why I like Aya. She does so much good with being able to heal me. Unfortunately, she died. So even though she fights pretty well, you know, <laughs> she she has her limits, just like everyone in this game. And I'm just gonna pick up this here, Hunter Vestige Part D. And uh, yeah, there there was a there was a video transition there because at a certain point in the game, I died and decided to switch out my uh, other character. Um, using sure Yakumo uh, rather than Io because he does so much damage and honestly I think he's the best help the best partner to have in this game um, for damage output simply put so you know it's it's just a good idea to have Yakumo around and another fatty hack and slash dodge and Backstep and make the crap out of you and watch you fall off a cliff. That that was pretty epic. I mean, you guys gotta admit, that was kind of cool. But... Twisty turny attack always coming to the rescue. Love it. Going up the stairway, the stairway. And we're gonna fight 
this one soldier uh, of lost <laughs> soldier of the lost I don't, I don't think that's his actual enemy name but you know that's a pretty cool like name in my opinion soldier of the lost this place used to be a park, huh? and we're gonna unlock this here missile and we're getting very very close to our boss fight for this video and I'm gonna level myself up to 162 Another reason why I do a lot of the editing uh, for these uh, gameplay videos is because, you know, um, when they take up a lot of time. If I show everything from me dying to me coming back and going through the same level you guys already saw before, which is mad boring, it just takes a lot of time. And I know you guys aren't going to necessarily enjoy that. So um, and it's also long. It makes the video longer more drawn out you already saw me kill those enemies you don't want to see me kill those enemies again so i just think it's better if um you know if we just go ahead and cut it out put in a transition not to not to completely jar you guys out of your seats or whatever so i'm gonna go with that overdrive and um adrenaline adrenaline buffs your sword uh, overdrive buffs your buffs your weapon but um, if you get hit, it goes away. So when you use overdrive, really try not to get hit. I know it's difficult. I'm not really the greatest with not getting hit 24 seven, but it's helpful. And Prometheus Vestige Part B has been found. Along with a wig MJ109, that'll be used to help you get more um, abilities from your blood code. And I'm gonna put in uh, that poison resistance because this guy does nothing but poison. Butterfly Delirium is actually a really big pain in the ass ball fight. At least was for me. Let go of me! We lost the race. Well, strength succeeds where speed fails. Wait, this place is... Hurry it up, damn wretch! Without your blood, we'll all suffer! Or didn't you think about that when you ran off? He didn't get a long uh, one-handed sword through him, but he got messed up by a giant butterfly thing. Alright, and I'm about to fight this butterfly delirium uh, as soon as this loading screen comes back. And we're in it. Um, naturally, you saw me pick up my health. I did die a few times fighting him. But, you know, the show must go on, so let's do this. Get some, uh, right now, I got something that's constantly healing me. That hand symbol constantly heals you. You get it from Queen Slayer, which comes later on in the game. Um, I usually use that along with something to buff my weapon. Sometimes I'll mix it with Overdrive um, and Twisty Turny Attack. Hacking and slashing them. Dodge all over the place. You want my advice for firing this guy? Just keep hitting him. No, that's not good advice. Um, I have someone help me because I have patience issues, but I'm battle this dude. Take him down. Show you what else you can do in this game. I like to get in that teleport slash as you can see. But fly to Miriam. About to take an L here. Really cool man. Dropping the heavy damage with that giant sword. You know what it's about. Wow. That tail is really annoying. Ah, oh, gosh. It is so annoying. But, oh, wow. That poison, though. What that poison do? And he is... No, I died. Now he's dead. Haha. <laughs> and that concludes the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed.